at PZ. Okay, yeah. thank you. Let's see. Um, uh, one question is more generally about the relationship between therapy and neurofeedback, because I know that this is something that is dear to both of you. If you want to share a little bit about how that relationship, uh, how, how it plays, is, is there a, a one before the other or any, anything along those lines? Well, it's a huge question, and it is a little bit what, what uh, Ruth and I were beginning to, I mean, I was asking Ruth about the whole idea of ending up in being able to go and teach in China. I mean, that is just not an outcome you would think of with a severely dissociative patient. It just isn't in your schema to think that that's going to be what they get, to, and it's not in their own. So there's some thing else that goes on when you train the brain that isn't possible to have happen without. Um, and I've seen it repeatedly where, where people step into these new senses of themselves and, uh, and are able to um, uh, uh, do things, um, be things, um, not, not just lower symptoms, although that I think is a lot what we're doing, but step into this whole sense of self. Mm -hmm. And that uh, it's not just that memory and less fear and all, all of these capacities that are inherent to the default mode network, but also uh, the new possibilities that having a self allows. And I just don't think we can get that circuitry online with neurofeedback along with people who have had these kinds of histories. I wish we could, um, but uh, it would mean a lot less work for me if we could, but I think that, um, you know, for me, and Ruth may, may think differently about this, but for me, I think that, and, and you know, you can look at it quite directly to say, okay, a good deal of neurofeedback is just a lower arousal. Uh, a fear and reactivity so that people have a chance to um, breathe and a chance to relate, a chance to use therapy. Um, but there's another property here that I think is um, a little mysterious, a little bit out of the reach of my words anyway, and that's the trip to China. That is the ability to leave home, to have enough sense of self-integrity and safety to take on such a thing. No, I agree, Siren, and this is something that we really want to study in the future, right? You know, combining, you know, traditional psychotherapy and here, I really want to stress that it needs to be an integrative approach with neurofeedback. I see them very much going hand in hand and, you know, what the addition of neurofeedback can do, really documenting that very carefully and really looking at the sense of self. We don't have good measures of the sense of self yet. It's something we don't measure in treatment outcome and we should, right? Because you also saw that in Anne's case and actually in both, both the case history other than uh, Susie, the one who went to China, that their sense of self shifted so much, right? And what neurofeedback can add to that. And you know, when I first started doing neurofeedback and using this alpha down protocol, you know, I really realized and I thought, my God, you actually have to be a better therapist. I remember years ago talking about this. You have to be a better therapist because now all the stuff that I wasn't used to coming up so fast was coming up, up much faster, right? That awareness of things, right? Which is difficult, right? Mm -hmm. When you haven't been aware of all the pain and, you know, some of the relationships and, you know, making some of those connections, and just like uh, we saw with Susie, when you know she became embodied, that's not easy, and that needs to be processed. And so, yeah, I think we actually need to be better therapists when we facilitate, you know, those processes with something like neurofeedback. Yeah, 